century, when the barbarians are coming, when the Vandals and the Slavic peoples, of course they were not called Slavic peoples at this time, but this is when the Goths are moving up out of Sweden. The Goths then split up into two groups, the Visigoths and the Ostrogoths. The Visigoths traveled west, the Ostrogoths traveled east, and that's where they settled in Italy. That's who Othello is dealing with, were the, were the Ostrogoths of Venice, the agents of Venice, who would later be the ones that would be the double agents that would destroy the Crusades on behalf of the Christians. So now that we see all of these clothes coming out of Italy, all these fashions coming out of Italy, giving all of these Italian Americans or Italian peoples credit for all of these fine silk clothing, they sat at our feet to even get the silk to make this from. They didn't even know where to get the material from at this time. One of the things that the Moors brought into Europe was the fact that you could change your, your, your texture, your textile, so that you didn't have to wear heavy material in the summertime. They wore the same thing all the time. What the Moors did is they said, you know, from, you know, when you get out of wintertime, you can get a lighter fabric, and then you get the spring fabric, and then summertime, you get a, a summer fabric. Wintertime, you can put that cold stuff back on, but you don't have to put your winter coat on in July. <laughs> Another thing they did is that, you know, the uh, thing that peoples of European descent would do is, and again, when you look at people who are getting food for the first time, you can kind of understand why they'd be happy to get a meal. So what they do, they take everything, just put it in the middle of the table, meat, potato, whatever it was, it was all together. When the Moors went in, they said, wait a minute, you have to break this up. <laughs> in fact, you don't even have to jump into the main course right away. Why don't you just break up with some peanuts or something, you know? A little bit of salad. You don't have to jump into the meat and potatoes right away. So what they started was the courses. They also brought utensils in. And they introduced concepts such as toilet paper. Because we used to use our cuff in Europe at one time. You know? And that's where the phrase, Beware the man to shake your left hand comes from because all of the, the things that you would consider to be unhygienic, you did with your left hand so that you could leave your right hand, which would probably be the hand you'd use the most, not to be cluttered, not to carry different things that you let your left hand do. Please. I heard that before, but I heard that they always apply that to the Arab people. Yes. So why do they sneak that off? Because, when they, because really what they're trying to sidestep the Arab into the more. See, this is another thing that you're going to see in history. Once they get the Moor to be Muslim, they're going to then change the word Muslim and Arab around. So you don't have to deal with the Moor. See, there's no such thing as an Arab. An Arab doesn't exist. Arab doesn't exist. An Arab is an Afrab. To be an Arab, you must be mixed. That's what makes you who you are. Like, like a Puerto Rican, like an African American. The foundations of who we are as a people, and I'm not saying that all African folk are mixed, because a lot of folk get very upset when you say, you know, you can't say it in absolute, so I speak not in absolute. But for the most part, many of us come from lineage, where, and it doesn't have to be European mix, it could be Native American mix, it could be a number of different mixes. But the only difference between a Puerto Rican, a Dominican, a, a Haitian, Jamaican, North Carolinian, is a boat stuff. Some stayed on and some went on. That, that's the only difference between us. If we were to have a, a family reunion, I can't speak for everybody here, but I know I'd have people who look a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. I think we all would have the same kind of situation. And if that would be, then the, then the reality is, is that within this group of people, we're all the same. So that's why when you look at Saddam Hussein, he look Hispanic. Because Hispanic is what an Arab is, which is a mixture of the Eurasian and the African. You can't escape it. You can try to, but you can't. You're black. Jennifer Lopez is black. Mm -hmm. Okay? And however she looks morphologically or phenotypically, she does from her African ancestry. So these are the kinds of things that as you move into these maps, you look at the migration of peoples in the fifth century, what you're looking at is a lot of activity going on here, particularly with the Visigoths coming in here. And that's important in terms of the Moors and what's going to happen with um, Tarif and Tariq in 710 and 711 coming up through here because what you also have is that you have these people, the Vandals coming up in here. Somewhere in 429, 533, Africans said, that's not going to happen. That's another reason why the Moors went into Europe, was to offset this movement of these people coming down. This has been the war. And if you look at the war today, it's the same thing. Look at what's going on in Yugoslavia. It's the same thing. Ethnic cleansing. Who are they after? The so-called Muslims. But wait a minute, who are they? These are the Africans that have been in Europe all these times. 
So this map here shows what Europe looked like and North Africa looked like somewhere in the late 400s going into the 500s. They did not control Africa. Um, and, and, and by this time, the Punic Wars had already taken its, uh, its toll with the Romans. Hannibal, but these were the ancestors of Hannibal. I'm, I'm sorry, these were the descendants of Hannibal. North Africans. So you see the Visigoths and the Ostrogoths. You see the Huns. The Huns are returning to Asia. See, these are Eurasians. These are people coming up here. Not all people like that. Not all Asians come out of this set. But they do come out of this Eurasian family. So this, Dr. Clark said that word vandals, that's where the word vandalism comes yes, from? Yes, okay. yes. And barber, right. barbarian. Yeah. They named themselves. And the early people that came up out of the mountains of the Caucasus, they called themselves the Devs. Which then, then you have to ask yourself, was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that far off? The Devs, right. Because the Southern Europeans called the people coming out of the mountains the Devs. Why wouldn't you see it moving about, um, uh, I can't remember his name, the Huns, yes. Attila, Attila and yes. why they always look um, oriental? They never look For the same reason world. Michael Ansara was Cochise. <laughs> okay. okay. So because they they're trying to create a visual for you. Okay. They're, they're trying to create the kind of visual that so would get Genghis you to... So Khan really didn't, wasn't one of those oriental? No. Well, he was, a, he was Eurasian, but the thing to remember is that there's a lot of folk of African descent in Asia. Okay. At this time, the, the Egyptians had already come in and set up the Shang Dynasty, which was the first dynasty. The Ethiopians that had crossed over into this part of the world had already moved into um, parts of India, had already moved into parts of the, the uh, southeastern world. Uh, and again, the, the key to remember is that every human being is African. And as you look at an African, all you're really observing is where they are by degree to their original strength. And this is something that sometimes is very hard for us to really deal with. But whether we like it or not, Europeans and us are the same people. They just mutated themselves out. It's like when you see a faded plant. That's still a plant. It's just faded. You can't say that doesn't belong to the plant family. You know, and, and I know sometimes we get very upset at the way in which they treat us. And so we call them humankind, kind of human. <laughs> which is very true also, because by matter of degree, there's a difference between homo, homo sapien and homo sapien sapien. Homo sapien was a barbaric thinker. You see, there's a difference. You, you can be a barbarian and still think. And that's basically what the crossover from Homo sapien to Homo sapien sapien was. Homo sapien sapien was the creative mind. It was the peaceful mind. It was the one that had taken control over its reptilian brain and refused just to fight. These individuals do nothing but fight. This is their life. This is their job to fight. That's all they do. They have no civilization. That's why they're moving all around. They have no civilization. Concepts of home they don't have. They cremate their dead because they're nomads. When, when you're sedentary, you bury your dead. When you're nomads, you carry them with you. And so that's where carrying their dead came from, cremating. African folk don't cremate. There's too much of a biological, botanical relationship of our body to the earth for us to burn. It's like burning money. Our body going back into the earth is part of the nitrogen cycle, part of the carbon cycle. It is important that we go back into the earth as we are. But to them, it's different. Because by the nature, you know, you love your mother, you don't necessarily want to leave her behind where, you, where you're going. But if you're leaving, you've got to take somebody with you or leave them behind. So, so that's where cremation came from was to be able to burn your dead and put them in an urn and carry them with them. So this is the migrations of people in the 5th century, which is going to set up the Moors. Because at this point here, this is another reason why you see Islam growing. Because you see something happen spiritually here now. You see, you've got Judaism, and then you have Christianity. You have amongst them exploitation of both, because this is what they're all doing it. Because as they come down, they're getting, first of all, when they impacted the Roman Empire, they took on Christianity, particularly Germany. See, they're, they're picking up where they go along. So they're picking up Christianity, which is a theoretical philosoph uh, philosophy of living. See, at this time, people are living spiritually. That's why the, 